a luxury skyscraper soaring 1,396 feet above Manhattan, built on a footprint barely wider than a brownstone. Its slender frame was meant to embody engineering genius, but now some call it a billion-dollar disaster. Swaying high above the city, residents report floods, terrifying noises, and elevators trapping people for over an hour. Lawsuits allege more than 1,500 construction defects. The official story celebrates architectural ambition, but this is the New York skyscraper that defies engineering logic. How did a symbol of limitless possibility become a cautionary tale that even experts never saw coming? To understand how vision collided with physics, you have to start with a simple question. Why push a 93-foot lot to the edge of collapse? Raphael Vinoli's vision for 432 Park Avenue was never about fitting in. The goal was to create a residential tower that would stand apart from every other building in Manhattan, rising from a footprint only 93 feet wide. That meant pushing the boundaries of what zoning and engineering would allow, but also of what luxury could mean at this scale. The developers assembled a patchwork of air rights from neighboring low-rises and townhouses, paying as much as $520 per square foot, sometimes even higher, to secure the vertical space needed for a 1,396-foot tower. Sales brochures promised panoramic views and total privacy, marketing the building as an exclusive address for the world's wealthiest buyers. On paper, the numbers were as extreme as the proportions. The total cost for land and air rights exceeded $724 million, with individual transactions like the $47.5 million Bucciolati store and multi-million dollar lease buyouts just to clear the way. The message was clear. Compromise was not on the table. Every inch of sky above Park Avenue was claimed, not just for height but for an icon that would redefine what was possible, no matter the risks that came next. Bedrock lay just 60 feet below the surface, but that was the only certainty. The site's footprint, a tight 93-foot square, left no room for error. Engineers drove about 60 anchors, each plunging 60 to 70 feet into Manhattan schist, locking the base into rock that has held up the city's towers for a century. But the numbers were unprecedented for a residential building. With a height-to-width ratio of 15 to 1, the tower's profile resembled a vertical beam more than a traditional skyscraper. Even minor miscalculations could amplify into major problems hundreds of feet above. Wind wasn't just a design factor, it was an existential threat. As air flows around such a slender shape, it creates vortex shedding, a force that can cause a structure to sway or even resonate dangerously. The foundation had to counter not only gravity, but twisting, rocking, and the unpredictable rhythms of the wind. Every anchor, every calculation, became a wager against physics itself. Five times along its height, 432 Park Avenue opens up to the wind. These mechanical floors, each spanning two stories, are more than just spaces for equipment. They're engineered voids. The idea wasn't to fight the wind, but to confuse it. By punctuating the tower with gaps every 12 floors, engineers broke up the air pressure that would normally build along a flat facade. Instead of letting vortex shedding set up a rhythm that could rock the building, these openings let gusts pass through, scattering the force. Early wind tunnel tests at the Marine Institute in Newfoundland showed how this worked. Pressure dropped sharply at each open floor, and the building's signature grid acted like a sieve. Engineers tracked how the wind wrapped around the structure, then dissipated. With each open tier, the tower shed a little more of the energy that could have set it swaying. This wasn't just a workaround. 
It was the first line of defense, a way to tame the invisible forces that threatened the world's tallest residential stick. At the heart of 432 Park Avenue, engineers set out to create a structure that would withstand forces no residential tower had faced before. The solution began with a 1,200-ton tuned mass damper, an enormous steel and concrete block suspended near the crown, designed to move in opposition to the building's sway. When wind pushes the tower, the damper swings like a pendulum, absorbing energy and calming the motion. It's the same principle that keeps a grandfather clock steady, but on a scale measured in subway cars. Supporting this system, the tower's core acts as a rigid spine, built from ultra-high performance concrete with compressive strength up to 14,000 pounds per square inch. Outrigger walls stretch from the core to the perimeter columns at mechanical floors, tying the structure together and distributing stress across the entire frame. Every element was tested, modeled, and retested, from the damper's mass to the concrete's chemistry. On paper, the numbers promised stability. With these reinforcements in place, the team believed they had tamed the wind and locked the world's tallest residential stick firmly in place. On Halloween night, the wind struck hard. Somewhere above the 80th floor, a metallic groan echoed through the walls, followed by a sudden jolt. Residents described a deep, rhythmic creaking, sometimes so loud it rattled glasses in the kitchen. The tuned mass damper did its job, but the building still moved just enough to set nerves on edge. In one incident logged by management, a resident stepped into the elevator at 10.15 p.m., and found themselves trapped between floors for an hour and 25 minutes as gusts rocked the shaft. The emergency call system worked, but every minute ticked by in silence, broken only by the hum of the wind. Elsewhere, doors vibrated in their frames, and the trash chute thundered with every discarded bag, amplifying the sense that the tower itself was restless. For those inside, Life above Park Avenue was not just about panoramic views, it was about learning to live with a building that never quite let you forget the forces outside. A torrent of legal filings hit the developers in April 2024. The condo board accused them of orchestrating a deliberate fraud, claiming they concealed thousands of facade cracks and structural flaws to secure profits and leave owners exposed. The complaint cited a 10-inch core crack and more than 1,800 facade defects, seeking $165 million in damages. Insurance premiums, already battered by water damage and elevator failures, had soared 300% in just two years. The building's risk profile now rivaled its height. Every defect, every dollar lost fueling a lawsuit that threatened to redefine accountability at the top of New York's skyline. At 1,396 feet tall and with a footprint just 93 feet wide, 432 Park Avenue challenged New York's engineering limits and set a global benchmark for slender skyscrapers. Engineers relied on more than 60 anchors drilled into Manhattan's bedrock and installed a 1,200-ton tuned mass damper to counteract wind sway, according to construction records and engineering reports. Yet, documents from resident lawsuits list over 1,500 construction defects, ranging from elevator failures and water leaks to a 300% surge in insurance costs. While the building redefined what's possible with concrete strength and aerodynamic design, it also exposed gaps between engineering models and lived experience. Some records, including full settlement details and proprietary wind studies, remain sealed. Today, super slender towers continue to rise in cities worldwide, using lessons, both technical and cautionary, 
drawn from 432 Park. The evidence shows that pushing vertical limits brings both innovation and new risks. Whether this marks progress or a warning is a question that architects, engineers, and residents are still debating. <laughs>